In this example, we're going to look at how to deal with uh, chi-square contingency tables. This is when we have frequency count data, right? So we have to do a chi-square, uh, but we have data that is being categorized uh, two ways. So it's very similar to a two-way ANOVA, only with a two-way ANOVA, you have uh, regular numerical data, you know, ratio level data. But with uh, chi-square contingency tables, you still have data that's categorized two ways, but you now have frequency counts. So here's a typical example where we can see that a poll was conducted to investigate opinions about global warming. Uh, the people were uh, asked you know, how they felt and they either answered yes um, when they felt there was solid evidence that the Earth's getting warmer and they categorized them um, into two categories, their gender, male and female, and then uh, what they thought those results were, right? So human activity, um, you know, was the cause, natural phenomenon, uh, or natural pattern, sorry, or they don't know. Uh, so you can see here that this is what we would consider our contingency table, or kind of like a two-way table for uh, frequency stuff for chi-square analysis. We're going to use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that the sex, right, the gender of the respondent is independent of the choice for the cause of global warming. And that's all a chi-square does with a contingency table. Is it's, it, it basically says, uh, is the distribution of the numbers in this row different than the distribution in this row? If gender was independent of uh, these opinions, then both male and female would have roughly the same distribution. You know, you would have, if you added all these up, 309, 146, so that's 455 plus 48. So we have almost 500 people, right? Right around 500. So this is all about 300 out of 500. We would expect that if the if the gender had no influence, then this is about 60% of the people said, you know, 6% of the males said human activity. We would expect 60% of the females to be roughly uh, the same. So it's not so much that the numbers have to be the same, it's the distribution, right? Because you might not have an equal number of male and females, right? If you only had uh, 100 females and uh, 500 males and there was independence, then you would see roughly 600%, so you see about 300 here. But then you would only see about 60 here because that would be 60% of the 100 females that we have, right? So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a similar distribution of these frequency counts. Okay, to do it in StatCrunch, very easy. Click here, click on Open in StatCrunch. And then it loads the data for you. Now, if you come across a problem that doesn't have that option or it doesn't load the data properly, just know that this is how you have to put the data in StatCrunch. You have to have what are called the row labels. See how these label the two rows. Those have to be in one column of your data. It doesn't matter what you call it here. It always just defaults if you know, don't have anything. It's just variable one. Then you have to have the actual frequency counts right, in other columns. And it's best to have them labeled. So this is labeled with human activity, right? natural patterns, don't know. And then the numbers obviously have to be in the right places. So this 309 has to be in the proper cell. It has to be the, the number of males who thought human activity was responsible. Once all your data um, are in the right places, it's very simple. You go to stat. And because we're dealing with um, a contingency table, this is where it gets a little hard to figure out where it is. It seems a little counterintuitive. You think, well, shouldn't I be going down here to goodness of fit or somehow trying to do chi-squares? But no, we're doing chi-square contingency tables. So we go to tables, and then you'll see your second option is contingency. With data would be if you actually had raw data. So you had an entire column um, of data. You don't have that. You actually have the summary. This is a summary table, and your data is a summary. So you click with summary. Select columns, that means select the columns that have the frequency counts. So you have to select all three of these. You can do that by holding down the shift key and then clicking first and last, or you can click them individually holding down the control key. In either case, you just have to select all the columns that have the numbers in them. Then down here, select where the row variables are, which was in the column labeled variable 1, right? If we move this down so you can see it, right? To remind yourself, 
there's variable one. Okay. Um, column label, that's just optional if you want to give, you don't have to do that. Uh, display, if you want extra information like percents and expected counts, you can do that. For the most part, all you care about are the actual results. You're doing a chi-square test of independence. If you're asked to do a Fisher's exact test, of course, this wouldn't work right because it's only for 2x2 two two tables or McNamara's or Kramer's V, you can select those. The default is what you normally use, it's just a regular chi-square test for independence. If you want to do some uh, confidence intervals, you can choose those down here instead, right? And then you want to give it the level that you're going to test at, and they had um, our significance level was 0.05, so this is good to go at, uh, at 0.5. So all you have to do now is compute, and there are your results. So when it asks for the test statistic, that's your chi-square statistic, right? You had two for your degrees of freedom, there's your value, round to the appropriate uh, decimal places and then if they go on to ask for your p-value there's your p-value. It's just that simple guys the hardest part about these types of questions is making sure your data is properly formatted in StatCrunch. If it doesn't load automatically um, you know when you use these little boxes then just make sure you type it in yourself uh, in the right places. That's it.